yeah, I read it all. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome back to October's Correspondence uh, episode of Heresy Hammer. Uh, hey, Rob, where, I have yeah. a question for you. Oh, yeah, go for it, go for it. How is it October already? I, it's nuts. Like, I was like, oh, September's a nice long month. I can yeah. get lots of work done in September. And then, boom, it was just filled with solar auxiliar army for me. I was like, Ugh. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And soon be approaching Christmas time. Yes, um, Christmas time. So, welcome back, everybody, to Heresy Hammer. We, as I said, going to go through correspondences. We're going to look at hashtag Heresy Hammer. We're going to catch up with the latest news as well. If you are unfamiliar with me or the man above me, uh, the man above me is John at D6 Miniatures. So make sure you go give him a follow. And I do am Medus Miniatures. Yeah, you can do that. First things first. Thing. Subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Like the video, comment on it, then go follow me on Instagram, then come back, back to, to the unfollow Rob, and then come back. To <laughs> I'm almost on. I'm almost on 30k, 30k um, subscribers. Ooh. So I'm thinking about doing some sort of big heresy giveaway, maybe tapping up some sponsors. Mm. Um, and it, you, you, I don't like worry about it too much, but when it gets to, like the 10k mark, you start to then obsess, and then it gets over the 10k mark, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm not so interested in it and then it reaches the 20k and then the and then you I don't know why you're rubbing it in I don't know why you're rubbing it in I, I just I just, just yeah, yeah. Like you, just fucking just... you shouldn't worry about these things social media it's not oh, real oh, it's your not ego real. <laughs> anyway that is who we are um, and we are going to take you through uh, the news of this week and uh, this month and what's been going on in the preceding Ooh. month as well. Um, yeah, I think that's 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 the broad brushstrokes. But we're going to say thank you to our sponsors of the show who help us to keep the lights on. So first up, we have Curtain Games, uh, amazing place to go get all your um, hobby goods from, particularly your miniatures from on time delivery, speedy delivery um, and really reliable as well so make sure great you prices as well yeah really great. Good prices. and good stock i was in their shop a short while ago and not today it's early in the morning today that'd be <laughs> recently and uh yeah loads of stuff on the shelves great stuff loved it yeah. uh next up we have bits monster so if you are looking for five men's rather than 20 men's in a box then these are the guys to hit up if you're looking for a contemptor from the age of darkness box because you don't need the other weapon sprue then these guys are the guys to hit up so they um basically spell sell sprues and bits they're based over in northern ireland you can use the code heresy hammer for 10 percent off and they do free shipping over 25 pounds that is bits monster go give them a follow and we also have gator 3d printing dan has just recently left his his full-time job so i'm sure he's got lots of time on his hands to do all your printing uh printing goods he's just done some alpha legion um uh, moritats for me um nice. which i'm looking forward to uh painting painting up um yeah, so, yeah. Up some uh land speed is my death card actually oh yeah oh yeah yeah 100 oh, okay. yeah yeah um yeah the land speeders mark has some land speeders and they just look i wouldn't be able to tell that they're any different from the 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 og uh one so yeah make sure you get down to do those um so you can go follow his work so heresy news uh what's been going on so basically the legacy has been updated but uh they forgot to tell anybody about it um yes. so a couple of changes in around the iron warriors and salamanders mm, i wonder why that could be um so basically the like the big dreadnought guy he's been updated so he can be taken in a black shields uh, that's it yeah and then some of the iron warriors characters have been updated um as well uh the in the legacy document they've also got rid of uh Aster and crone the old rules for Aster and crone the old yep. rules for cadius nex um as well uh but of course they didn't get rid of cambodius because he is a brand new brand character new. but they got rid of him and i think that um it was interesting this one because i think some people felt like ah oh, that's there's some bloody bloody cheek there um mm. getting rid of some free rules bloody hell but then i was just like i i, I it was to be expected, I think. Like if they release yeah, rules in a book, yeah. particularly, uh, I don't think that's a particularly harsh thing to be doing. The fact of the matter is, the rules have been superseded, so why do we need the old ones? Uh, I, exactly that, which is just like, well, I think that was probably it was inevitable. Mm. Um, and I'm sure if you are looking for the old rules of castering Aster and Crone, you can always go find them from a friend who's probably downloaded it as well. Uh, all heresy pdfs now show the date 17th of the night 24 as they have been ported to the new warhammer community page no other pdf has actually been up 
updated. Yeah, it was interesting actually as well with the mm. new Legion, the legacies, um, where before all the new stuff was in the magenta. Some of the new stuff isn't actually in magenta now, I don't think. Yeah, um, no, they've made it very difficult to understand yeah, exactly what's been changed, which is change, yeah. <laughs> which isn't which isn't massively useful. But yeah, so if you are Salamanders or Iron Warriors player, you might want to go uh check the check your characters and see what is what on yeah, there. To make sure that none of your lists and the models have been completely and utterly invalidated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Particularly Black Shields lists. If you're using like because the, oh, well, yeah. if you do run Black Shields, you now want those as characters, you might go tap those guys up. Cool. What's up? Uh what's up next? It's the news, mate. We've got a new Eidolon book coming. I know this was sort of teased a little, yeah. a little while ago, but it's actually it's, it's happened now. I'm quite excited to um to kind of read about Eidolon. Actually, he's one of the kind yeah. of you know when you kind of go through the kind of you know the Holy Trinity, the initial three Black Library novels. He's one of the it's one of the main main G's that isn't a Primarch really. He's literally there. he is literally there on murder, isn't he? Fighting the Mega yeah, Arachnids, and that's where he introduced yeah. him in that very first book. Um, and he's been a pivotal player, kind of all throughout, including Sat Nine. Spoiler alert! Until he gets kicked off, uh, kicked off the walls. Um, mm. I wonder whether this does this follow on from that, or is this like set beforehand? Do you know where? I think this is probably. I would imagine this is set in his sort of descent into Nutterdom. But yeah. um, we should. Uh, we should. I'm genuinely looking forward to reading this one. I'm going to try and pick up the um, special edition because Eidolon was. An, an OG uh, character for me. My first army getting into the heresy was Empress Children Army. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, it was led by Eidolon largely. So okay, quite cool. what he's been, uh, what he's been up to, how he becomes such an absolute maniac. Yeah, some of these short stories as well, with the centered around these characters, are absolute like lore gems. Like the the Valdor one, which went through the destruction of the last of the Thunder Warriors, was just yeah. it was just really cool. Like it was a retelling. He was basically telling it. The audio book was great because it kind of has that like grainy yeah. sound of like a recording on it, um, and it was it was just gave so much like. Ah, uh, depth to the what we understand about pre unity like terror, what we understand about post unity terror as well. I was yeah, just like, this, oh yeah, this is sexy. Sigismund was also absolutely. So I've heard that. I haven't read the Sigismund one. Um, mm. Yeah, but I, I've heard it. Yeah. it was brilliant. Yeah, the origin story is fantastic, and then there's obviously the tipping point of mm, we think you should probably yeah. be the right lord, but we're going to put you in the fist. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I might try. And, I've got my audible credit that came in yesterday, so I might try and uh, listen to. I would one hundred percent recommend. Read by Keebs as well. Ah, of course he is. That he's he's the he's the daddy, isn't he? Um, yeah. Cool. So, oh yeah, October. Yeah. So the new White Dwarf is out, um, and there are new rules uh, for a Zone Mortalis mission that happens on Neocon City. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Neocon City and the conflict of Beta Garment, me and Lee have done a massive like Beta Garment series where we cover yeah. basically it's a three kind of episode lore series. The first part is introducing Beta Garmin and the context. The second is basically following the Hawk and the Hound, so um, Endred Har and then the Khan and kind of what they get up to because they're the main protagonists within the Beta Garmin book. And then the third part is the Great Slaughter, which is basically for, like the the main element of foot on it is um, the conflict around Neocon City. So it's really really cool to see. Um, kind of like this being put into it and it's just great like if you're if you don't pick up white dwarf this will just be worth picking up a copy from your local news agents just that just to have it um because i think uh absolutely yeah. like it's great to see obviously you know it just kind of reiterates the kind of mainstream support that the game is getting so mm -hmm. more rules and as you well know i could play so mortalis for the rest of my life and yeah. never get it's so. the, it's uh, the best way to play, I think, and and also if you're looking at that being like, oh well, it's just Sons of Horus and Imperial Fist. Well, there are loads. If you check out the law video, there are loads of other um, forces on. Nick yeah, forces. absolutely. You know, not just Legion of the forces as oh, well. Yeah, yeah. You play like with like militia, PDF, or you know, like yeah. solar, whatever. Like, yeah, you know, it's yeah. really really good. So make yeah. sure you check that out. So that's that's actually just really nice to see. Just keeping it like I, li I like that they're just ticking it over as well like i know that they're ramping up what seems to be a new heresy thursday although it was a bit like rubbish we'll come to that in a bit but it's just nice to see stuff like this where it just kind of like 
keeps it ticking over i think it's just yeah, yeah really, really nice new, new rules as well as always uh, always welcome the- yeah okay cool. with uh, nice. movies <laughs> Yeah. so a little bit of context on this so i think at the weekend uh before heresy thursday this was leaked and it was the back of um this kind of right. showing showing these images right this was leaked i think it wasn't unexpected especially if you're an ally player i think you guys were expecting mechanicum kind of all along in the way that we are probably in the long term expecting kind of custodies and and sisters of silence or at least i hope um yeah, I, I mean, I got, Andy, I Andy said at the really terrible roadmap leak <laughs> mm. that um, essentially everything that was in LI is going to be ported over to 28 and everything yeah. that's in 28 is going to be ported over to LI. So expect kind of a, a real um, kind of correlation between what you see for each system. So I yeah. think what we can expect to see is the art attacks yeah. coming to 28 mil. Yeah, I, it was it was it was interesting, this, wasn't it? Because it was almost like this leak what was the worst way possible to see that our art attacks art attacks um all attacks um it was just like the worst way to see it i think because yeah. it's just like monopose it's like it was in like a grainy image um yeah. and it would have been nice i think to see like a 28 mil version alongside this little version um because yeah. i have no doubt that this means within the next few months we're probably going to get the 28 mil version of this uh, this model which makes sense now because why it's in the mechanicum book because you just like this model has not existed for 12 10 plus years so yeah. why 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 is it actually in the Libra book but the intention clearly was to to put it into 28 28 mil um yeah. however what that meant oh we also saw the uh thanatar with the uh last cannon and the graviton kind of like yeah. fist but we already knew what that looked like it's just going to be yeah. obviously being plastic and then the final thing we saw as well which was a bit tasty was the um just go back um was the the doom buggy which we like we've seen a doom buggy before yeah, we have, yeah. with but um one. but not this one this is like a um yeah is it, i mean it's uh, the the principle is the same but this one's got like a little servo arm it's got like a gun coming out of it forge will do a doom buggy um as part of their like character series mm. um but, but it's it not was, generic i think no that's, no it, it's, yeah it, which is make a striker back so it is yeah, a that's it character. um so and i think that <clears throat> you know, it makes sense to have a um an abeyance mod release because i think most people want to take it with abeyance yeah a hundred percent so there were like uh, on on you know one side it's just like uh, okay it's li but actually you could pull up a few threads here and kind of go oh i can infer that this might be coming this might be coming this is what it might look like um yeah. which is quite nice i think the knock-on effect though was that whether they intended to show this on the first heresy thursday um i don't know because it was leaked and then you had the follow-up heresy thursday so whether they basically were like okay well we're gonna have to show this now because it's been leaked so whatever was horace heresy then was pushed back i yeah. still maintain li is not i understand it's in the world of horace heresy but whereas it's i always am like uh this does not make me feel good when it comes out as heresy thursday no, I, I don't know, though, the other thing as well, which I haven't necessarily seen too many people speculating on, is there are other things shown in this particular box that are currently available in resin. Myrmidons, Domitars, yeah. the um, Volsharax, do you yeah. think, and the Vorax as well. So do you think that means that we're going to get those in, in plastic? Yeah, I think so. I think that um, it wouldn't surprise me. Do you think me. we're looking at now, we're looking at the plastic 28 mil range? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't surprise me if they get the Myrmidons. I, I actually think, so this is going to be a controversial thing to say, I actually think the resin Myrmidons are, are looking a bit tired. I think they are quite just quite busy models and um, they probably need a little, like, I think personally... A little bit of jujun I think Bam so. with the Bam with the Spice Weasel. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it would surprise me if we get the Artilax before we get the Myrmidons. Like, I I would have thought Myrmidons would probably be a priority, but I assume you can probably still get them from the Forge World website. If you don't, if if you can get them, put them in the comments below because um, I need to, uh, we need to check it. But um, yeah, it's interesting. I think there's quite a lot that you can infer and pull out and deduce from the back of this box, which is, which is 
nice for. Yeah, I, for I agree. I think there's some, there's some cool stuff here. And the fact of the matter is, right, if you're an NLI player, you've got a third faction now. So, 100%. Yeah, 100%. This, yeah, is, it, this is great stuff for you. Yeah. Um, Shall I tell you something just as a complete aside? It was yeah. interesting. So, going to the Cryptic Cabin, um, it was a narrative event, but also slash kind of like tournament thing. But it it was it was really good. It was really well done. But the knock on effect of having a thalax um, in plastic was that there was an awful lot of thalax around, um, as either people scoring because they'd taken a forge lord so they could unlock them, um, mm. or as a dedicated like allied detachment or as a main force there were just an awful lot around so just as an fyi and i think we say this an awful lot on tactica videos which is that if you aren't future proofing to encounter them at events then you're going to have real problems because just las cannons shooting into them are just such a waste of las cannons you need a heavy oh bolter. yeah there's a reason why i'm sat here chipping paint off a typhoon <laughs> but at the same time i'm also thinking quite fancy doing some indentured mechanicum for my yeah desktop. yeah oh, the, i like having painted the that so the thalax in plastic are slightly bigger like when you hold them against like the solar auxiliar models yeah. they're like fuck these are these are chunky as fuck like they do look fantastic they can be like you could spend a long time painting them i mean of course we're not full circle hobby and we're not going to spend like three months painting like is that to make them look beautiful you can paint them in a day with like some speed paint and just get them up and running and you just you know, weather the shit out of them um yeah. but yeah they have they're a bit fiddly to put together but when they're put together it's like oh yeah these are these are top these are the ones yeah no i think uh i think i'm thinking a christmas project a little Oh, good yeah. idea. Yeah, the winter the, in the win in the winter months. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Bunker cool. down and get a few a few mechanical on the table might be yeah, might be quite fun. So yeah, sounds so. What would you what would you put? So you're going to have an Archmagos and then yeah, I think Thalax. This is the difficulty. Thalax. I think some Vorax. Quite like Vorax. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. 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 And um, I think it's difficult just to kind of fall into the kind of like obvious traps. It's so yeah, yeah. I tell you what. One of the things again, we're giving away. Um, me and, John haven't spoke, me and John haven't spoken for a while, actually, face to face. This is why we're just catching up. One of the things... Um, yeah, yeah, bear with us for a second, guys. We're, we're, the one of the things that was worth checking out is, like, the tech priest auxilia along with, yeah. like, the services. Because yeah. they've got, like, the tech priest has line. When we looked at it in a tactical video, we were like, it can do this, and it can do this, and it can do this. And, like, actually was really, really strong. And then mm. within the macro tech, they could be taken as troop choices. Um and Lee was like, "Oh well, you can just give every servitor a melt, uh, like a multi melter." It was, it was like the what you could do with it was was pretty loco. Um, yeah, and you can, I, yeah. I, must admit, I had, had a game against Will at the weekend, and mm -hmm. I had well and truly on the multi melter hype train. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Five man multi melter squad wandered around the court and just took out his <laughs> Praetor in time. <laughs> So, Suck um, on this. Yeah. I quite fancy some Domitars, actually. I think the, yeah. the lesser spot of Domitar, I think, has got some, some interesting... Yeah. I, I think that um, they will just be amazing at anti-Dreadnought. Like, that... Yeah. And that's what I would just... Like, because you know you're going to play Legion, say, at an event or whatever, and you're just yeah. like, okay, two Domitars in the list. You... Like, I think they're, what, like, 100 and... or well, 350 points. But if a Dreadnought chooses to charge you you're just like oh graf flamers and yeah. it's like d3 on each one you're just like and they've got haywire your dreadnought is not even in combat like no, no because it's just completely it's just, it's just completely it's just spasming in the corner all <laughs> yeah i am um, yeah definitely i think like as dedicated anti-dreadnought um mm. yeah it's good I, the other one i i don't know if that haywire template is ap4 because it's also i think if you take it would make quite good um anti solar orcs i'd have to check if it's ap4 but it would be quite good at um solar orcs i think it, if it is because you're just like oh my ap4 flamers are now just hosing down like yeah. men's everywhere so yeah anyway worth check hello everyone we join you from the future or the past <laughs> were we in the past previously now we're in the present um <laughs> I just literally, I tried to work it out on my way from where I was lying to where I'm now sitting, and I um, can't get my head around. Anyway, we couldn't really thought we could do a, uh, a news show without squeezing in the only bit of actual proper news we've had mm -hmm. in like ages and ages and ages, yeah. which is 
that the much fabled and lauded close combat weapons upgrade set is is upon us. It's here. It is here. God, and you know what? I think this is a triumph. It's it is incredible. Um yeah. and the amount because my worry was that we would get a combat weapon set with ten weapons, like yeah. two axes, one fist, a few chainsaws, and then that would be it. And I was like, uh but this is absolutely smashed my expectations yeah. about what we are getting. Um and I tell you what is also great about this is that there's cool stuff that I just wasn't expecting, like no. an underslung bolter, a yeah. like a power sword being drawn. Like you can now add this to the um like a Mark Six like squad and then the the um and then add in the command squad and then just like kit bash the fuck out of these things and then you're gonna have a really cool looking like command squad right or a jump pack unit that can become a command squad when you like put all those things together uh, and like you have enough weapons now to like because sometimes you're like oh i don't want like one power axe in a squad of 10 i want like multiples of it and now you've yeah. got like four um yeah. Yeah, it's I been... cannot. Um, I cannot explain to you how much of a triumph I think this kit is. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't know how much it costs yet, but I think it's kind of it kind of doesn't really matter. I no. mean, if it's if it's anything like the um, the like heavy weapons kits, which is yeah. kind of what I'm expecting. Yeah, but I mean, which you know, giving you know, sort of twenty, twenty five ish kind of pounds. Yeah, I would, I would say that the kit will probably go for thirty pounds from GW, and then you yeah. can get it for twenty four pound from a from a third party. A third party reseller. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is a, an absolute triumph. Um, I have heard people complain that all of the range weapons are left handed. But I, I honestly think right now, like if yeah. you're one of those people, then I think realistically you must lead such an amazing life to have this to worry <laughs> about. Like, I'm actually quite quite envious of your position yeah. landing in society because right. I think to pick holes in in this is just kind of needless, really. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic kit. Um, was not so some of the things I was not expecting was not expecting ten new heads brilliant like no. that that is that is absolutely brilliant i did notice though that some of the heads are the same heads from the mark six kits but yeah. they've just like put a quiff on quiff on them yeah, which is yeah. interesting so they've yeah. clearly got the 3d file and then just added uh added hair to them like so yeah. the, the heads are great because like the resin heads they're quite expensive like i understand you get a load yeah. of heads but actually yeah. like if you're just like oh i can't really and they justify. are really lovely kits as well i think to honestly, that was the, i don't think I think to you, I had much the same feeling about the head kits ahead about this of just like this is just this yeah. is just what yeah. up. Yeah. But if you're somebody who's unwilling to just pay like thirty pounds for twenty heads or whatever, yeah. and, and you only want a couple, because that's some of the things some of the things I would say about those heads is mm. that like they're perfect. Some some of them are perfect for white scars, but most of them are not perfect for white scars. So like this is just like having these within that is great. Uh the power lances did not expect a power lance. No. I love I love a good spear on a marine. Yeah. Um and in no way was I expecting that. Um and the different marks of bolt pistol. Like yeah, I really, really nice like touch. that. Um, really nice touch. And some people I like cuz we've seen a lot of umbra bolt pistols from GW cuz it just is the like the most generic one. Um yeah. Uh, with the with the plastic kits that we've seen but i just like the fact you've got a phobos bolt pistol that you can attach mm -hmm. to your like mark three guys right and I, yeah. I think that's yeah i think that's really good and uh, how often as well like and this is an, another one for me which is like a centurion um so i i think i think i'm right in saying that like a console or centurion comes with a chainsaw so like a master of signals comes with a chainsaw or whatever um but Jesus you never side. But you never ever put a chainsaw on a master no. signals because he's already playing with his like iPad and stuff. So just having the option of a of like a dangly leather sheathed chainsaw now is just like ah oh, that that's perfect. It's now what you see is what you get, and also adds just a little bit of character to it. Um, it's also yeah. nice as well. I think that they've given you things like the augury scanners held oh, in hands and the so grenades good. held yeah, in so hands. Good. And yeah, oh my god, pointing yeah. open hands. I think this is this kit is just. Yeah. Brilliant. They, We've they, waited yeah. a long time for it, but yeah. it has, for me, delivered in. Yeah. In but the only thing I noticed 
words around the Power X, which is it looks like the size of Daphne Rand's Power X, which is if yeah. you've seen that model, they yeah, are boy. like they are comedy scale big. Like I don't know, it, it kind of has the same profile, same edge to it. Um, so these are the, these are like proper whoppers. You um, would have thought though it would have been an easy thing to do. Again, they would have had a three D file, and you just put it in. Exactly, exactly that. Yeah, but um, this is great. I think as well, like. I know it says power swords and charnable sabers. I think like charnable saber for me in my head, it has like a curved edge, but I it's think colors. you could use it. You could, yeah. you could use like a power sword as a charnable saber. Like that, yeah. that is totally legit. It's fine. Um, yeah. Do you think my, my kind of like final question before we um, uh, kind of go revert back to what we were actually originally talking about would be, <laughs> do you think there will be a Terminator melee weapon upgrade set at some point in the next 18 months? I kind of feel like, yeah, I do. I think one of the reasons is that I think, is it the, one of the weapons kits? I want to say the, is it Sons of Horus have like a weapon kit out that had a mixture of power yes. arms and Terminator yes. hands yes. in there? Yes. I think it would make perfect sense, right? Mm. It's just, it's, it's also, it's another thing as well to stop people going to three printers. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. The what <clears throat> if it comes sooner rather than later? That suggests mm -hmm. to me that um, they are not going to rescale the Terminators. If we are waiting a very, very long time for a new Terminator melee weapon kit, that suggests to me that actually they're going to look to at some point within the next three years, perhaps rescale those Terminators. Maybe. Those I mean, there's a rude day that rumor of that like Mark, new Mark II and Saturnine pattern yeah. Terminator on a box set that just kind of won't go away. No. It seems to have been simmering for about nine months. So yeah. perhaps it's going to be something to do with that if it mm -hmm. exists. We mm -hmm. we know no more than than anybody. Well, obviously some people know, but <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, I think it would make sense. I, I do think those, like the Cataphracty kit specifically, having put some together this week, is um, is feeling a bit tired now, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that they're just, they are probably, I think, three to four millimetres too short. Yeah. yeah like, it, and it's like nothing, but it like when you see them against the new Terminators, the new 40k Terminators, you're like, yeah. oh, I want the size and bulk and heft of yeah. these Terminators for, for Horus Heresy. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, Interested to hear what people's feedback is on this kit. I mean, I think that the uh, feedback that we've got from people kind of within our kind of broader circle has been overwhelmingly positive. There have yeah. been like a few uh, naysayers, yeah. but like I said, that's just because they are clearly better than all of us. Yeah. Um, but I think, um, yeah, can't get enough of this. Well, well, yeah. well, 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 wait. Yeah, and one, one final thing i just want to say is mm. that although there are 42 arms on this i would imagine that some arms only fit like the spear so like that would, pair yeah. that pair of arms although yeah. you could probably kit bash it or like cut it in some way like it's not like 42 arms that are just like here some of them right. will be specific for the chainsaw so holding it like this yeah. and some for the power lances as well so i think that 42 arms yes but also some of those arms will be useless without the appropriate weapon being held yeah I, I think so but that's just what it is right it's the same thing it's with what it the, is. Um, yeah 100 percent. with heavy weapons kits you know you get have to have 100%. different arms for different weapons and that's yeah. just what it is but you know i think like i said well done this is another step towards you know making um yeah. making more lists kind of viable you know mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. need to invest time and effort you know if you haven't got access to a 3d printer and you want loads and loads of despoiler arms you've either got to not run despoilers or you've got to really kind of dip long and hard into the older the old savings account to buy the four yeah. drive ones. Yeah. So God. I think this is, um, I, th I think genuinely it's stuff like this that facilitates more interesting lists because all of a sudden people are going to be like, I can do this cool thing that I want to do. I can do this really yes. interesting armed veteran yes. squad now. Yes. Because I've yes. got all of the bits. Yes. Like I can put a 10 man really interestingly spec veteran. Yes. Like, veteran team together now for, for 40 pounds yeah a hard, like 100 percent. and then you might see more pride of the legion and then yeah. like more interest i like i honestly think a like 
the uh, Mark Six Assault Squad, this kit, and the Command Sprue, and you've got like an absolute awesome dick kicking, like ten man bespoke. Got like some with helmets, some without helmets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm so excited. This is yeah, great. genuinely, this is brilliant. Right, uh, we're going to now jump back in our Patreon funded time machine and revert back to the past <laughs> and finish the episode up. But um, yeah, as I said, any thoughts and feelings on this kit, leave it in the comments, and uh, we'll catch you. Uh, in a brief second, yeah, um, have a look at some, uh, some hashtag heresy hammers now. So, this is people yes. that have submitted their wares via the uh, the hashtag heresy hammer, uh, hashtag on Instagram. Yes, that's right. So, first up, we've got Alfaris did nothing wrong, went to an amazing event, uh, by him the other, the other day in Cheltenham. Um, yeah, it was brilliant, and he's done an absolutely awesome world eaters. Really, really nice to see world eaters. Um, uh, kind of like the red and the white, it yeah. looks so good. I like the fact that the arm is red, that is because it just makes it stand out. Like, for yeah. that, I think that's good and works well with the transfer. I'm level with you, Roberts. I think the paint job is fantastic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I do not like bareheaded contemporary dread, dread yeah, dreadnoughts, it's just not. For me, it's not for everybody, not for everybody, but he has done an amazing job with the paint. Oh, he's done a wonderful job, and he yeah. is a great guy, he is Bloody. genuinely fantastic. Great guy. Um, but yeah, I think the paint job is excellent. I like the white, I think the white is absolutely yeah. trivial. It's really good, actually. Yeah, I really like it. I'll have to, he'll have to write it in the comments below actually, how he did it. Actually, people, people bitch about like how difficult black is to paint, yeah. Um, but I think white is even harder, yeah, yeah. He's done, yeah. He's done a really good job. So this is this is really nice. I think. Yeah. Uh, so we've got Talkathor. So this is um, I don't know the bloke's name, but he's a um, a golden demon winning artist. Um, and he, he to hear that looking at this, would you? Yeah, he did the um, Russ and um, well, I think he did the Russ and lion diorama that was a golden demon some months ago or some years ago for the duel um where they were like fighting up the stairs i think he i did, remember that yeah i remember I think, that I think, and he's like been dabbling in heresy uh he's got quite a cool like dark angels uh force and i'm, I'm not sure more. this is fantastic yeah it's really really good i'm not sure like i think it i think it is this guy i will double check but um uh yeah so it'll be it, so he does a lot of heresy stuff actually which is actually great to see for like a golden demon uh winner mm. but this is just this is stunning isn't it like it looks absolutely awesome it's weathered like perfectly this is how you'd expect a tank to be kind of like weathered i yeah. also what i like about it is that you can see it seems so obvious but you can see that the white has been painted over the top of the blue exactly what i was gonna say and like it's just weather so nicely, so it's not like Rhinox chipping. You've got the the you've got the yeah. the blue chipping, and then probably some like Rhinox or brown you're or something just, like that. Just yeah, you're not just cheated Medwell style by sponging Rhinox over. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No. This this looks like yeah, it's really really well done. I like the tracks as well. You know, they're obviously are to some extent silver, but actually they probably look like what tracks should should actually look like. Yeah. This is a this is a stunner. It's really good. Um, it's yeah, not it's, Proteus, the lesser spotted, or not amateur Proteus, the lesser the, spotted, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, you don't see this very often at all. No, I was sort of like wondering it's why it's slightly, why, why it's slightly different. Yeah, um, yeah. cool. What's up? Uh, what's up next? Maybe you can take us through the next ones. Certainly shall. So, Full of the Blade um, has done this wonderful. So, his stuff's been popping up on my feed for a little while actually, and I was like, where has this guy come from? Because these are brilliant. Yeah. Um, so I think, I'm not sure if these are a print or if these are the, I don't think they're the Tortuga Butchers. Um, so I think the Tortuga Butchers are quite closely related to the um, to the GW one. It's just a bit bigger. Got it. Like service. But it looks absolutely fantastic. They just look that bit more. There's lots of things I like about this. So the first thing I like about this is the house proportion between the white and the red. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the amount of gore that's on the model. It yeah. is plenty, but not too much. I think it's very easy to get overawed with the amount of gore. Um, I don't know what it is about this particular pose, but it makes the plastic lining claw arms look a lot less derpy than I think they look on the majority. Yeah. 
majority. You know, I, I think it's the face because it's there is actually su- the such an aggressive, um, like arm flailing pose. It needs a suitably uh, aggressive face, and that it works really nicely. I think, yeah. It's good. I'm going to be huge sneeze. Apologies. Right, and then uh, on the right of your picture, we've got josh aka water underscore beast friend of friend of everyone if you ever met him he is your friend um he's been working on some black shields recently which he is putting in an unreal amount of work to individualize all his units is is this what the terminator squad he's been working on like is for oh my god it's insane the amount of effort and work he's put into um into it is nuts yeah i agree my absolute favorite thing about it though is grenades on the chest Oh boy, yeah, um, yeah. He's definitely worth checking out because I was like, "Oh, these are just going to be awesome looking white scars," and actually, they're going to be awesome looking black shields. So, um, yeah, and actually, a good inspiration for not just doing stuff out out of the box, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's a very unique. like. I don't think it's one of those things that like there's nothing that no that one could not attempt themselves, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but it's just executed really, really well. Even simple little stuff like, um, like the big like slash across his chest yeah. that cuts the armor. It's just a really deep cut into the armor. Like he's yeah. physically gone through and just like chiseled a bit out of the armor, and it's just painted brilliantly and works so so well. I think this is fantastic. This is when people talk about like brim dark, which is not necessarily my favorite term or way of painting. I feel like it's quite often a um, this is going to be controversial to say, but I think it is quite often a byword for I am lazy. Yes. Uh, I but I think this is an example of how you can do grim and dark and execute it perfectly. Yeah, it's interesting actually looking at his Terminators because I am not like Black Shields to hold no appeal to me, but they're a really good example of where you can kit bash multiple kits that wouldn't usually kind of like work within a Legion aesthetic and go, these are Black Shields. Yeah, uh, these have some funky like armor and weaponry, and you're just like, yeah, I accept that. Like, you know, what what wouldn't some mad tech marine do to kind of like get a force like fighting fit? Um, yeah. and like because he's got they're like he he's used Indomitus legs plus cataphracty legs, plus, you know, plus Indomitus bot. You, you know, they're just like a real mishmash of like kits, which I think works really really well. So yeah, definitely worth uh checking uh checking what piece out. Right, what have we got up? Um next uh we have got hold on here we go oh yeah oh well it's probably worth spending uh some time talking about heresy underscore era so um i think he's a yank um i assume he is but he's been producing some really interesting youtube videos of late like he's got some i was actually looking at his work this morning on instagram just complete coincidence um he's got he's he's like um he's got this massive imperial fist vehicle yard but he is the one that did the um that battle report that was like 20 minutes long where it's like there's some dice rolling but actually it's more like a scene it's more like a, a battle right um and i think the internet went absolutely wild for it so definitely worth checking this guy out it's genuinely fantastic yeah yeah and and novel and new as well and i yeah. think that it's worth checking this guy out because he's doing some really interesting things on youtube and if you're a her- uh, heresy nut like i think he's doing some of the most original content on youtube I agree. in terms of I think but also there's, quite, to... there's a lot of good um painting tutorials on there as well yeah i think when it comes to bat reps i think it's just presented in a really different and also kind of like short form content exactly right yeah like that's the thing you see it's not like it's not like watching a heresy hammer you've got to invest yeah. in your morning while she sat down painting to yeah. uh to get through it it's like i've got 20 minutes to spare so i'm gonna yeah. watch this really cool cinematic way so yeah big big up heresy era it's probably got significantly more subscribers than we do now so oh i have i thing, have i have no doubt but um shout us out yeah, I suspect though that that I mean I'd be interested to see, but I'd suspect that that uh, video, not just the filming of the video, but the mm. editing of that video, probably oh, took him a... days to do. Oh, I, I, I would not disagree. I, it feels like a passion project, like a yeah. proper passion project. Yeah, cool. Yeah, original stuff. Anyway, painted teeth. He's been to um, a couple of our events before. He's got an m- fun, amazing, amazing looking. Um, april fist army and then yeah. he's done this absolutely awesome like master of signals but i absolutely love this 
the helmet. Like, yes, I, is this is this a like a conversion he's done? It's like I the have, peak. I have no idea, but it's it so is absolutely top tier. Yeah, that's brilliant. Like, if you could let us know in the comments whether it's a three D print or whether it's like a kit bash he's done, because I definitely would steal that idea. Yeah, it looks, it's, it looks brilliant really good it's yeah. really really good i remember seeing this on the thing when i was looking through and being like <laughs> yeah Hello. yeah this is really Hello. good and he can and with a satellite dish like that he can get he can get sky tv transmitted straight to his uh yeah, absolutely. Uh, He'll get, he gets all the channels mate this is like <laughs> uh, fast dick, this guy he is yeah. he's getting everything mate yeah this is also yeah. i think a good example of where you can use that generic uh pro tool model um and yeah. it just work with like an arm swap um or two arm swaps uh adding a satellite dish at the top and i think um, yeah. the generic prey source in the box specifically the traitor one has aged like a fine wine yeah 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 like seeing stuff like this you like oh okay a lot can be done with that model i think when people first saw it and he was holding on to that massive axe people are a bit like yeah Oh my god, this is basically an age of Sigma. <laughs> yeah. But um actually, in the context of the aesthetic now, I'm looking at this thinking, this is this, this is, is so good. Really good, right? Yeah. Actually, I've like, got a couple yeah. of them sat in a drawer waiting to be utilized on something at some point. You know, uh, that's a really good point. And actually, like you could change the paint job on the shoulder pads and be like, oh, this is now a Sons of Horus. Um, like, and it would work for any Legion one. I I just want to know where that helmet came from because um it's all the hair came from. Once it in your life. Yeah, I would I need a couple of those because they look brilliant. Cool. All right. What's um what's up next? Uh so we've got Passable Dot Painter who's given us uh some more world eaters, but this time they're in blue and white. And again, like an unusual scheme and breakdown of a scheme, which is like a lot of the quarters. It looks like quartered, a, isn't it? Yeah. It looks like a Marine's errant for any of you yes. bad fans. Yeah, and uh also a suitably uh brutal amount of uh blood on here as well. Yep. So he's done a really, really good job. The white looks really good, the blood looks uh like splattered it's been splattered amazing i don't know if he's done it like with an airbrush maybe he's like mm. got it got it with um a paintbrush and then just sprayed like air it's through it and it's just gone. unusual not to see uh a massive decal on the carapace of a little yeah 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 it's yeah. It's so used to being yeah. like well this is a massive canvas i've got to slap an enormous decal on it to make it yeah yeah but it looks really 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 good yeah i love that yeah lots of gore but i actually think I actually think that is it's tasteful and works quite well. Uh, yeah. And then we've got table, barely tabletop Brian. So Brian is a big uh, sport of the show, friend of the show. Um, and he's been working really, really hard on the Dark Angels Force. And it looks fucking right. brilliant. Like, it looks brilliant, like what he's doing. I'm assuming he's getting it ready for no retreat because I think he's going to no retreat uh, next year. Um, but it looks fucking awesome. And also, John, you might recognize this, it's also holding the Heresy Hammer banner. No way. Yes way. So he's uh, holding a banner. This is a conversion using some Heresy Hammer specific parts. Um, mm. But yeah, if you don't follow Brian, he's got an absolutely awesome World Eaters Force. Like, it's fucking mega. Um, and played definitely... him in the didn't you? Did I make that up? Yeah, yeah uh, I played with him in like a, in a doubles. I didn't play against him. Um, but he did really, really well. Um, but he definitely had been to the john Askham's school of uh list building like he'd got the double punisher out and it was just like mowing down people left right and center um but yeah this, this dark was. angels force is brilliant like it looks it's so good. good yeah and you got like a tr like a non-metallic metal blade and stuff like that it's just yeah, yeah he's put loads of effort in he's done a great job yeah go give him a like and a follow and a kiss well and because he's canadian he's obviously just such a nice guy he's just he just falls into all those stereotypes that you would expect well here i um, do you want to take us through these two? Yeah. yeah. Have we featured Steve's work before? Rick Maybe Eason? once or twice, but he's not. I don't think he's a regular regular feature. Right. So um, for those of you who don't know, Steve is a big regular on the uh, kind of UK event scene. He's got a huge and absolutely stunning. It's massive, isn't it? Blood Angels Army. It uh, hoovers up awards wherever it goes. Yeah. Drives around the country with his hoover out, hoovering up awards. Um. He has got this uh, in Candius here. For starters, one of two things. The pose is absolutely perfect, I think, for any Candius. I think it just screams of either landing and about to slice your head off or taking off and about to slice your head off. Um, it's the kind of the, the pointed toe 
the sort of ballet style point in time that really does it for me. I know there's a name for it, but I don't know. Yeah. I should let me know in the comments. Um, um just yeah, super, super rich red coupled with like a really nice like burnished gold. <laughs> it's quite an orangey gold. I mean, you don't tend to see that often. I think I think, you know, a lot of golds tend to be quite sort of like purple in nature uh -huh. uh, or kind of like heavily desaturated. So it's nice to see something that is a little different when it comes to the hue of the golds. Yeah. Um, the blue on the lightning claws is like a real throwback to kind of second ed 40k or third ed 40k. The sort of Furioso, the classic Furioso Dreadnought makes it great. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Base really nicely as well. But yeah, yeah the pose is great because it just draws, focuses your eye like straight into like the head area. And um, I think he's... I think it's a good example of taking a kit where you've got almost an infinite number of options and you can kind of kind of I think sometimes you can kind of ruin contemptors and love dreadnoughts in general by just getting the pose slightly wrong. But I think this is a classic example of how you can enhance a dreadnought by getting the pose absolutely bang on. Yeah, yeah, he's done a great job. Love the base. He's been brave enough to put some airbrush dusting around the bottom of the feet as well, which I think is always a, a brave choice. But when it works, it works well. So yeah, mm. he's, he's done a great job. His army is ginorm. He's not. He's not a flitter like me and you, John. He doesn't go from army to army. Oh, no, he just. He is. He's, he's like cut him and he bleeds sanguineous. Yeah. Uh, like he yeah amazing looking for us. So he's giving himself over to the vampire life. And he's <laughs> interview with a I think it's quite group. nice as well seeing the kind of the true metallic metals painted in like a non-metallic metal style yeah so yeah there's a lot of sh additional shading that's gone in and sort of top highlights feels very much like going back to our friend adam full circle hobby yeah, does the way he would do it yeah 100 100 looks great it's brilliant and then we've got uh, i s i t l v underscore painting underscore studio yeah so bit, another big friend of the show posts a lot yeah, in, our, in the, in the uh, Harrison Lodge group yes, on Facebook that's right. recently. Yes, that's right. Hello, this yeah. looks wild. And he's another person actually who, if you cut him, he bleeds magic because he's like predominantly, I think, his own. Yeah, exactly. A lightning bolt. Exactly. Yeah. Like he has a massive thousand suns force. It's humongous. Yeah. I love this. I'll tell you why I love it. It's a good example of highlight in black, where it still yeah, feels black, not yeah. like blue or grey, which is what yeah. tends to happen so often. Yeah. Um, he's really paid a lot of attention to where light would hit the panels, especially if you look around the kind of the door area where you've got like kind of multiple planes back up against each other. It's paid really, really good attention to where the light would hit and how it's shaded. Yeah. I think that's, it's kind of, it feels like it feels like how it would like it would look. I know, mm -hmm. you know we tend to use a very stylized way of like, especially like shading flat surfaces mm -hmm. in the Harrison. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this looks like how it would look if it was trundling towards you on the battlefield, ready to disgorge yeah. forty four space wizards into your into your <laughs> ranks. So. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it looks brilliant and great to see some uh, mechanized elements for thousands. Yeah, it's massive on a thousand suns army as well. It's, no, like it's a very, very, thing. very rare, isn't it? And I think that if you're going to fill it full of Sekhmet and a siren dreadnought, I think that yeah, this is probably a way you want to get them in. So um, yeah, nice work, really, really good job, and thanks for posting in the Heresy Lodge. It's always so good to see. Yeah, your work if you're don't forget if you're a member of the Heresy Armor Patreon, which you can join for as little as three pounds, then. Um, Find Harry Hammer Lodge on Facebook and dive in there because it's a special group for all of you super, super best friends of the show. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Uh, and then we've got some emails. So, uh, August, he has written, uh, Hello, guys. As I've recently painted five destroyers with jump packs for my sons of Horus, I'm sitting here wondering why don't we see more destroyers? Are they too expensive in points or is it the fact that they're not out in plastic? So I've I've got an opinion on this, but uh, my plan is to deep strike the lads with melt bombs to get some tanks in the backfield or to help out those black reaping charges keep up the good work lads cheers thank you for saying that we i of course believe we do do good work so that is good to hear um so um, <laughs> not, not your feeling validated, so, <laughs> so um so i i think the way that you're going to 
do it is the right way, which is to put melt bombs on them, um, yeah. because they are one of the few units that can actually take melt bombs on mass. And I think it's like a twenty-five point upgrade for a whole unit. I think. Yeah, I want to say I think it is. Cost, uh, yeah, and actually that has changed because assault marines used to like be able to take mass melt bombs and they were good as anti tank, but they were also good at killing killing dudes. Um, so I think this is the way. I think that. There's probably a couple of things. So number one is the I don't think the models have aged very well um, because they've still got those small, skinny little legs when you compare them to 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 that. And the like the principle works well because they've got this like reinforced armor. And when they first came out, like dual wielding like bolt pistol dudes, they're like, whoa, yeah. these are fucking awesome. Um, and then they gave them a significant points drop in 2.0, and you started to see sorry, 1.0, and you started to see them see them more. I suspect it's because they're in plastic, I, but I think really what it comes down to is that they are one wound, um, and uh, once you start adding gear to them, they mount up in cost, and they're they're quite squishy. It's not like, I think, with the Angel's Tears, where you can justify the expense by like strapping some Iliastas to them, where you can yep. stay out like within 24 inches and still be devastating. I think with the Destroyers, because they've got dual bolt pistols, you actually have to get quite, quite close, and then they are at the mercy of even like a tactical squad charging into them. Yeah, sure, I know they've got rad grenades, what, like, but they're still mm -hmm. at the mercy of a um like assault marines tap marines you know all those things so and i think that they'll just fall quite quickly i mean but then you just don't want to be like oh we'll just give everything two wins because then it devalues two wins um and i think that um yeah so there's there's always a place for them but i think they're squishy but i think the uh five guys melt bombs i think are, are probably probably the way to do it especially with black Reaver. i mean you run black reaving more than me john so i would have thought that um this would something would like a jump pack uh, yeah it, the problem is is the i think they're just as a unit a bit confused like i'm not 100 percent sure what the point of them is um and that's a difficult thing to say they've got rad grenades but they're no better in combat than a tap marine that's it isn't it yeah i um, mean they've got yeah, yeah. That, and that's that 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 is it i mean sure i mean there's going to be people screaming at the screen being like oh they've got like multiple like attacks or whatever that yeah. but their but their attacks are no more devastating than a, like a tap marine yeah. they've got jump packs but they're no better than an assault marine yeah you know they are they also sit in a weird place in army list building as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yeah because they're in the precious elites that's why Yes, you have four elite choices, but you know, if you're going to an event that's comping dreadnoughts and saying you can't take talents of dreadnoughts and you want to take a buff career to ten marines, then, yeah. then there you go. Um yes, they can turn metal bombs, but also so can a five man recon team that can infiltrate and haven't got to worry about deep strike mishaps or being intercepted. Yeah. Yeah. Um <sighs> Yeah, they're just in an odd they're just i think personally for me they're squishy and they're not in plastic yeah, i, I think agree. those two things but then you know you just don't want to be like oh just give them all two up so yeah I think the difficulty it's is with, with black reaving as well is the fact that like um so you've got to take fast attack choices in black reaving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can't take more you gotta have more fast attacks than than other slots so for instance like you tend to run javelins for many reasons a they're they're capable of putting out more firepower and being more versatile than a destroyer yeah um for soaking up those charges as well, or those additional charges for black reaving, they've got hit and run, so they can charge in and then they yeah. can move if you need them to, so they can get bogged down in combat and stop yeah. their advance. Yeah, that's so interesting. I do, I do think that they are, they're a bit confused as to what their job is. They've got, you know, they're, they're gunslingy, but their a choice of weaponry is pretty basic. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. It's interesting. So they can't. Yeah, okay. This is where I think it then falls down as well. So, and this is where what I mean about the, the points mount up. So one hundred and thirty points for five. Yeah, you look at that and go, oh, okay. Well, already that's quite expensive. If it was like one hundred and thirty points for ten, I think people would be like, I'm going to say this. That would be a no brainer. Um, but a you get like with a tax squad, you get thirteen. I mean, this is for the assault squad version i get i get that right but for an assault squad you would get 10 wins not five for a similar cost you know yeah. and then you're like okay well i want two volkite spencers that's 10 points per model i want yeah. two hand flamers that's five points per model like that's gonna that volkite spencers is gonna add up um add up really quick i think one of the things i'd like to see i'd say what this is what i'd like to see i'd like to see volkites and hand flamers cheaper like like mm -hmm. hand flamers as a replacement is just 
is a flat replacement for Bob Pistols and Volkites is five points. But I'd also, and this is going to be this is going to be crazy. I would like to see you being able to take missile launchers and Toxifer and Flamers, power weapons and Charnable weapons. Um, you can put them on everybody. So they're almost like a vet squad in the way... I was about that, to say, literally, yeah. that's exactly what I was about to say. They just think they need... If there were 150 points in the veteran stats yeah, and access to veteran war gear... Yeah, 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 or, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Or there were... Um, like the fable to destroy a company that you know yeah, i think yeah, yeah. guys did a, a rule set for back in 1.0 where mm. destroyers then such troops and gain what they would have gained line in the kind of yeah. context of 2.0 you know led by a more attack make be able to make a more attack your like your warlord compulsory warlord yeah yeah um i think would be would be really interesting i think i think they're just six of one half a dozen of the other they just yeah. don't like they they just don't know they don't yeah, really I, well, yeah, the, I think yeah. by something else that's easy to implement, cheaper to from a points perspective, also cheaper to buy as well. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think the difference is when comparing to the angels' tiers, which you see quite often, is that they can take the mast of the same weapon, mast yeah. heavy flamers, mast um, iliastus, so, mast like they can do that. Normal destroyers can't, which makes them the unfavorable choice. So, yeah, cool. I think, good, I think good so. question, good question though. They are good though. They are they have a role. I think in the, in Black Reef they have more of a role than in other other legions. But I think generally when we're talking about destroyers, I just think that they're yeah they're just confused. Yeah, World Eaters ones would be probably quite good, but oh I yeah. Mean, but then you just like oh should I just take a the spoiler squad and have more? Yeah. So. What does Jonas write about? Jonas, so I had a question for the finest minds in Heresy community. Thank you, thank you. Uh, a Th Where I, are also, they? I also agree. I also agree. <laughs> uh, Thanatic Calyx with Paragon of Metal is going to spread like wildfire when they eventually appear in plastic. So is the Calyx the uh, last cannon one, John, or is it the last um, cannon? cannon? And then okay, yeah. assist, yeah. It's saying your ability that sniping last cannon. Yeah, it's, and it's sniping. It's precision shot four up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Graph flamers on Overwatch, instant death, precision strikes in combat. It majorly rocks. Which means facing one can majorly suck far more than playing against Contemptor or a Leviathan ever was. Yeah, I'd agree with that. What are your top tips for dealing uh, with this one of these things? Okay, I've got two two suggestions. Um, one of them you're going to have to get quite close to. Is it? Am I right in saying that the last cannon is strength nine or is it strength ten? The last cannon. Does strength it? nine. Okay, all right. So I think that Haywire is going to be a way to deal with any automata. Um, yeah. And the reason why I asked is because the, an easy way for to get Haywire for Legions is the Proteus Land Speeder. Yeah. Um, you would need a lot to get rid of it, though. Like it, three of them would not be enough to kill it in one round. And no. then you're getting quite close to it. You have to get within 18, 18 inches, is what, what I would say. But at least when it shoots back at you, it's not doubling out the Land Speeder in a way a Doredio Laz Cannon would double it out. So that's my first suggestion. My second suggestion. So the Calyx question for you, mm. and you have to bear in mind because I have we've done so much mechanic recently. Oh, so much, so much. Yeah. Without cyberthergic powers, can the Calyx react if it's paragon? I, I think it can. Yeah, I think it's just like it can do whatever it wants to do. It doesn't need Cortex controller. I would, I would have to double check, but it, yeah. it like I think so, um, because you can't. Yeah, because you can't cyber third year paragon of metal. So, but no. um, yeah, I assume so. But again, there might be people screaming in the comments, being like, "No, that's not oh. right." And but Why bear in mind, things? I'm going to double check. Okay, because... well, and then my second way is that it might be worth thinking about investing in some kind of heavy conversion beamer, just because I've got a real hard on for heavy conversion beamers really? at the moment, and just blinding it. Like, so worrying less about, um, uh, so worry less about killing it. And just worry more about actually, can I chip some wounds off fine, but can I just make it ineffective for a game turn by blinding it? Um, and does a neutron like laser, mm -hmm. um, does that um, make all the things it hits stat fire? Or is it just vehicles that make stat fire? I tell you what, I tell you what, we'll pause this. And then we're going to come straight back in a blink of an eye. For us, we're yeah. going to go research because that might be another good way to to shut it down. Right. Welcome back. So we've got a couple of options. So as we said, um, uh, the heavy conversion beamer could blind it. 
uh, which is going to be massively, massively useful because then it's yeah. going to become weapon skill one and ballistic skill one. So that will really, really hamper um, its destructive capabilities and also yeah. will help in close combat um, as well. The other one... It's really worth we... better as well. Heavy conversion, but the heavy conversion, the conversion beamer is a great anti-mechanical um, weapon, especially that kind oh. of extended range because yeah. you can stop getting to the point where you can double stuff out and yeah. the thing is where it's always been a problem with the conversion beam where it kind of like middle like mid range is the fact yeah. that it's got slightly lower ap so yeah. people are saved against it yeah but obviously you know, against thalax and stuff they got four up save mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's massively do. useful yeah really like useful. i took well, i took a contemptor with heavy conversion beam, well sorry with conversion beamers and a predator with conver heavy conversion beamer uh yeah. the other day and it did some serious work and um yeah it's brilliant so the other one so i'm going to give yeah two more choices that you could do against this so the first one is the arcus and you can buy the neutron flux warheads for yeah, the arcus arcus. 15 points and i think that with the arcus so I, I've got mixed feelings on the Arcus. I think that it's such a target because it's so deadly to Legions and Mechanicum, mm. uh, but particularly Legion. So it's usually like you've got to kill it. But if you can't kill it, um, make sure you upgrade it with a Neutron Flux if you're going to an event because the Neutron Flux like warheads, I think they're AP3, but the you're rounds... Four. Are they AP4, are they? So the they're AP4, but they're breaching. So um, yeah, basically... Breaching. It has the neutron flux rule, which means that the it gains the instant death against automata. So the neutron flux warheads are definitely worth like checking out because he could get unlucky and not not save it on a two up or whatever. Um, and then the final one, the third option, I think, is that you might be worth having a look either at the Venator, um, uh, Sakaran Venator, or the um, little baby. I want to say. Um, Sakaran, but that's not right. Which are the ones in the fast attack? Saber. The Sabre with the neutron um, uh, laser, which well, is uh, well, only like one shot. It's not amazing, yeah. but it does have shock pulse. Um, and then the shock pulse basically against vehicles, dreadnoughts, or automata, if it gets a, a, a wound off or a penetrating yeah. hit, it will make it snap fire. I think yeah. it's the snap fire that's important because with snap firing, you can't precision shot a snap fire. So if you yeah. can just make it snap fire, you lose that precision shot. So you have more control of kind of like what it, what he's able to yeah. shoot at. Yeah, the neutral flux water are breaching five, but they breaching, are. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, five, the thing is gain, like 20. Gain, yeah. Okay. That's great. Yeah. AP4, breaching five, but they gain uh, instant death against all sorts of See, I think that, I think that's going to be like, it's almost like a, you just, We'll take that as an, a fifteen point upgrade for for the for yeah. You can take uh, a critical targeting around an Arcus as well for like yeah. ten yeah. points, 15. and then it can't. Yeah, and then, I mean it can shroud. It can shroud anyway, but it then if you stay still, then a unit can't so shroud. Good. So, so 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 good. Cool. Oh, and then so, yeah, you found out that it can't react right as well. Yeah, so it because it can't be it can't be targeted by um, side effect, so, yeah. and it yeah. doesn't it can't react natively because it's automata. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, you haven't got to worry about being shot back out by that horrendous heavy last cannon. So yeah, cool, cool, cool. Okay, good question. Yeah, good, good one. So three or four different options there. Uh, what's up next? Uh, we have got a list. So Simon, simple Simon, has submitted a list for us to look at. Um, I'm going to read you the context first before we read the list. So it says, I've been a Night Lords player since the early days of Heresy 1.9. Really enjoyed the old school terror assault with actual scoring specialist troops. So it's a few terror squads. Uh, I've been playing 2.0 since the release, but unlike my Sons of Horus or Dark Mechanicum, I've never felt like playing my Night Lords army it leaves me fit. Never feel like playing my Night Lords army leaves me feeling content, which is strange because I have had some horrendous experiences against Night Lords. Yeah. Yeah. Something feels amiss. I'm not sure if it's old edition, rose tinted glasses, a poor army list, me not gelling with the new rules for Night Lords, or a compound of the above. So I thought I'd submit one of my two most of my list and ask me to tell you what you think. I'm doing Night Lords wrong. Right, okay, yeah. no, I don't think um, I've got Sikara and Arcus, two of, and Conta Car that occasionally drop in alongside Seven Sark, but I generally find it difficult to fit into synergistical yeah. into army. Yeah. Any assistance in the aspect of list building to either confirm my idiocy or assure me I'm good in that department would be yeah. beneficial. So, Sorry. yeah, so just before we start, so I've just got some initial thoughts just before we go, go through, the, through the list. So the first one is that I don't think Night Lord's infantry are very good at dealing with um, uh, dealing with elites. So basically they're Atramentar, they're Contacar. Um, yeah, they are, Atramentar being weapon skill four. 
That, exactly. Literally what I was about to say. So the Atramental being weapons school four and the Contacar not having really like bruising weapons because they, they basically have the weapons that they come with. They've got very few upgrades. I don't think they can take Thunder Hammers or anything like that. Yeah. As a result, it's difficult, I think, for Night Lords to deal with heavy duty elites like deliverers for example are mm -hmm. always going to be a real problem for night lords which so in my opinion that they have to rely on strength nine and strength eight um ap1 and ap2 shooting to deal with the elites but they can with those their elite units bully one wound tack tack units that's i think the the crux of the problem with night lords in terms of like close combat the other thing is that basically they work best at night because of prey sight yeah um basically you want to always enforce night fighting where you can um and then because prey sight gives night vision and people can't shroud against it like you are really really fucking with people because of the fact that people can't shroud um so people can't evade and then if they get a native shroud it's like you don't get that and i think that that is just so critical and like because the you know dreadnoughts you can buy prey sight for dreadnoughts and be like i, I can shoot beyond my 24 inch range like yep. very few if any legions i can think of can actually do that so if you're just like okay this my double my double heavy com my conversion beam of dreadnought doesn't need a searchlight i don't even need to worry about searchlights i can just like shoot over oh, that thing there me. because i've got and, price got and and you can't shoot me and also uh, you don't have a shrouded now yeah. and i think that that's the thing so you need to really lean into the price site it's like a 20 point upgrade it can be expensive i understand that and can add up over a 3k list like 200 points or whatever but it's just such a good investment it's like having a having a it's basically like having a master of signals in every unit that you've got you're just like this, yeah. is, this is this is great so sorry I yeah think, go go for the yeah i think the biggest thing about night lords is not necessarily the list building it's actually like having a glance through simon's list he's actually pretty pretty yeah, good it's, it's got um, some teeth yeah but what the problem with night lords and this actually plays really really well into the legion as a whole is if it's you, you don't want to set up any fair fights like if you're going toe to toe with people there's no guarantee you're going to win you need to be really setting the board so that you are overwhelming your opponent yeah. like really like you know you are a bully boy legion yeah and you need to be bullying if you, you think it's gonna be 50 50 whether you're like whether you're going into a combat thinking you're going to win that's not good enough odds for you. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. That's not how a Night Lord should be playing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, let's quickly run through his list and then we can kind of see where, what we can do. So we've got Comrade Curse. Yeah. Love it. Yep. Uh, so Chaplin with Pedal Lightning Claws, Melt Bombs, and Warhawk Jump Pack. I see no problems there uh -huh. at all. And then we've got Vigilator, 95 points, which is uh, a, a great choice, I think, in a Night Lord's Army. Uh -huh. um, Ten rap night raptors, all with paired line applause and jump packs, masters, artifice, armor. Right? That's four hundred and twenty points, which is absolutely wild. That, that yeah, okay, Fucking yeah, insane. Yeah, um, ten assault marine, sergeant, artifice, armor, right? power fist, tear, and we've got the same again. We've got ten recons, or nemesis bolt, as one with an augury scanner. Contempt with two garage power fist, basic grav. Contempt with two conversion beamers. Uh, two times two jars of lance cans and multi melters. And Red clocks, I'm assuming the Leviathan goes into no, so so too, yeah. two cyclone melter, two torch melter, Volco caliber, caliber, and a phosphex. So, yeah. my initial thoughts are um, like, where on earth are the, are the apothecaries? You've got some real points heavy units there, and no additional way to keep them alive. Yeah. And also, the night raptors, I think, all with paired line and claws and jump packs is absolutely bananas because you just want some cheap poison to be a plate of wounds like if you're dropping like if you're doing like a big deep strike assault mm -hmm. um let's say with the ambulus the night raptors and the 20 assault marines like you're going to take some fire from people so you want some ablative wounds in there so i would drop a few of the paired lightning claws and the night raptors initially and, and uh, even just enough to give them better to buy them an apothecary as a yeah. starting point yeah so it strikes me that um that like if i played against this list i yeah. it would be it would be i think it would be quite difficult um just because he's got a lot to tear it apart however the 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 kind of couple of things i see here which is that you've got the assault marines are a funny one because um mm. are they there to 
beat up units or are they there to score and because they're in that kind of like dual in the venn diagram they're in the the middle of the venn the problem yeah. is they're not they can neither do one particularly well like if i said to people oh what's the tax squad for they'd be like oh it's for scoring and for shooting yeah. things like for fury and the legion in reactions and things like that but it's primarily there for scoring if i said assault squad it just fits in this weird 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 place i think um for me I'd like to see you drop the Night Raptors from the list. I'd like to see two tax what? squads. Yeah, drop the Night Raptors. I'd like to see two tax squads added. Um, yeah. They're going to help with scoring. And you can keep those bare bones. You can put them in rhinos if you want, but you can keep them fairly bare bones. Um, and then I want to see the an assault marine squad beefed up to 15 or 20 man. And I want to see Comrade Kurz go with the assault marines because they are just ablative wounds for him. Like that's all they are. They are just, a, and then it makes them fearless. They're scoring. Um, you can put a chaplain in there as well, um, just to, for the rerolls on the assault marines, and they'll get rerolls on the uh, for shred, and then that will easily outnumber anything. Um, and I think that's going to help you in the scoring game. I think everything else has real teeth, though. Like an Anvilus Dreadclaw and a Leviathan in it is a going to be a real headache. Um, yeah, it's, that's going to be a real headache for for tanks. But yeah, I want to see the Night Raptors dropped. Um, but yeah, th yeah, do that and see how you get on. I think would be. I can fix really. Okay, go on then. Um, I think I like what he's done here. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just quickly just double checking one of the rules on Conrad's. So I just want to, yeah, okay, right. This is exactly what I want to do. So I would keep Conrad on his own because I think he works so well siloing people around. Okay. Um, I would keep the Night Raptors, but I just reduce their points cost by trimming some of the war gear off them okay. and make sure they have an apothecary. I would yep. remove five of the assault marines and I would beef that unit up to 15 because you mm -hmm. want to keep those big units. Um, you want to make sure that obviously you're gaining access to talent for murder. So you want to make sure that you've got and admittedly they're bulky too, but even so, like you want to keep them, you know, keep them chunky. Mm -hmm. Um, and then buy them an apothecary too. And then I would want to see those recon marines split down to two units. Yeah, so that that makes got sense. Yeah. An additional scoring unit, you're not going to lose any um you're not going to lose like anything from them. Um, the Contemptors, the Lad, the Javs, and the Leviathan, I would keep as they are. You need to get Conrad like into your opponent's battle lines. He's super survivable, e even on his own. Like running on his own, he is a nightmare to kill. Like really, really, really difficult to kill. But what he has is he has like fear three. Yeah, which is getting into your opponent's lines. <sighs> Maybe be tempted drop the vigilator and replace the master signals mm -hmm. just to make your deep strike assault easier so anyway let's for argument's sake say you've got you know 10 night raptors 15 assault marines and the leviathan coming down from deep strike you're going to be creating a bubble around you like if it's night for instance and then you've also got conrad sitting in the middle giving out a fear bubble he's fear three so they're going to be taking pinning tests mm -hmm. at minus four Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when this enormous deep strike comes down and you basically just want to scare your opponent like, like in terms of like from a rules perspective i would just drop these big clumps of dudes down you're going to pin the majority of like your opponent's army and then you can just you've then got your army set up everything is cowing to you yeah i um the one thing if it's a small change he's going to make i want to see the vigilator dropped and you to buy prey sight on the javelins and the contempt with uh conversion yep. rumors like like that they need to have pro sites like the conversion yeah, I, I, do agree. Have pro site. Pro site. I think you can i think you can gain the majority of the points that you need by dropping some of the war gear from the night raptors i'd like to see that no more than three are night raptors a, th a three up save yeah okay so you could also as an alternative turn that night raptor squad into um a command squad like and just use the models yeah. And then they've got a two up save, and then everyone can have lightning claws. I wonder whether that would be cheaper than the current, like. I don't, I don't really, I don't really want to see what I would they say. I think that the thing that I would do is do something with the night wrap just to reduce that points cost. It's 420 points into a 10 man year, so but three up save is just, a, 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 um, 
a, a straight uh, eight pie plate landing on them is just yeah no I just, I just don't really want to see that unit costing more than about 300 and yeah. 300 ish yeah. points and then lose five of these all rings and turn into one big sort of 15 yeah. and then divide the recons in two add a couple of um add a couple of apothecaries in there and away but just getting comrade like up it like up into the it's middle because awesome. he's fast as well like he's got I think he's got fleet um, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's an absolute. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, he is an absolute mother trucker. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, lo lo well, loads of op loads of options there. Lo I think, I think we've given the three iterations of that list, haven't we? Yeah, but I would use. I would just fear bomb the whole thing. I would yeah. use. Yeah, that's how I would do it. I would just set the board in your favour by pinning everything with your deep truck assault and comrades fear bomb. Yeah. Yeah, I Ninja. suppose that's what he's tried to do with the Vigilator as well to get some. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I think the Vigilator, I personally would drop the Vigilator. Like you, you're going to be quite reliant on that particular tactic. Um, mm -hmm. And I think dropping the Vigilator from Master Signals is probably how I would make that a little bit more reliable. But I mean, why not try all the options? Why not yeah. try what I've said and what Rob said? And then you can come back and let us know if either of us are right. Yeah. But I think minimum the minimum price like though. I, I've, I've, oh, I've, yeah, you're yeah, price you get like. price like there. Especially I think the on list that. is. As a whole, it's pretty much there. Yeah, I, th I like it a lot. I think you just, you're just, you were at the moment tinkering around the edges of this list. Yeah. Absolutely, precisely that. We're just adding the last accoutrements. We're adding a delicious you on top of your lovely lamb shank. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Cool. Have we got any more? Yeah, we've got another list. list. Okay, cool. So this is Ricardo. Uh, he's got a three thousand points. Sons of Forest. This is Guard of the Crimson King. Uh, so let's go through. It. So, is there any context on the next page? Just have a look. Yes. Ah, okay. So this one is a bit unusual. Master signal with a rapier laser to give all the good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Possibly to snipe with cult and cast the bubble four up to protect the ranks. Right. So just if you're unfamiliar with Thousand Suns, basically his independent characters can become a psyker. So not only does he have all the rules for being a master of signal, uh, but he can also gain a psychic power as well. If he stays still, which he's typically going to do, he can then cast a four up uh, in bun on all the things that kind of like around him i think it's a six inch bubble or 12 inch bubble it's quite far from whatever cool um uh, but he if he moves it's, kind of it's, dome, it's called it, it switches uh switches off so the warlord with a quad launcher to make them pinning due to start defender yeah and that gives you a second shooting reaction and in case of necessity give an extra minus one to pinning check due to the cult yeah that's pretty good um as last resort he casts telepathy and then the chaplain with the spoilers so all those i think are actually it's really interesting so the um yeah, really interesting combination, putting your HQs as kind of like backfield buffers rather than yeah. um, frontline dick kickers. Uh, in reserve, you've got the spoilers with Chaplin, Melty Gun, Heavy Flamers, and Plasma Guns. Okay, really, really interesting there. Uh, so the Deep Strike could be quite effective if the quad and the snipers have already pinned something. Yeah, agreed. Some risky shenanigans with the Colts, so sniping Melty Guns and potentially a quite efficient multi-charge with the spoilers. Chaplin used the lefty to stop a reaction, pinned another one with a hallucination, and cast the Colts to give Hammer of Wrath to to the entire unit yeah interesting okay so he's quite reliant so basically though he's reliant on things working like if it doesn't work or doesn't go in your favor it might go horribly wrong um so just a reminder with guard of the crimson king i think it gives six infantry units um deep strike, strike. yeah so this is why he's able to deep strike uh these things in uh, as an alternative, I tried sometimes is to use the ether fire instead of the melter gun with the pyro cult. The guns are assault, so if possible, to shoot and do a nice charge, but very situational. And the warlord is coward and very easily killable. So far, the nicest list I was able to take with Thousand Suns. Please notice that there is no Terminators, no multi wind infantry, and no Dreadnoughts as well. Okay, well, let's go to the list. So, I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure why Ricardo has emailed us, because I feel like he's just gone... Look how clever I am. Yeah, Please yeah, validate yeah. how clever I am. Because I've, well, really, well, let's really, let's really do that because this. we we think this sounds like an absolutely crazy list. I think yeah, that a lot of stuff has to go right. But I, oh, think I, that, I love it though. I, yeah. I'm, I, as you know, I am a huge fan of 60% of the time it works every time. Yeah, okay. Any okay. list with a bit of jeopardy and a bit of kind of planning and forethought and things that need to happen. My son's a horror list, but exactly the same. It's yeah, like, if yeah. open up these multi charges, this list has got no teeth. But yeah. if it happens, they're yeah. big teeth. Rose of them like a shark. Yeah. Okay. This is amazing. Oh man, alive. Okay. This is to totally an uh, a completely different meta choice, I think. Or some of these are, are not meta choices. This is yeah. exactly that. This is 
yeah Absolutely. anti-meta so chaplin with parax and pyro so remember i don't think independent characters can actually buy like a psychic weapon which is a bit of a shame for uh them it's, um, it's a force weapon either yeah, so Master Signals with Telekinesis and Corvidae. Yep, sounds good. Uh, so Corvidae, I think, gives precision. Yeah. Uh, precision something, or maybe depending, I can't remember. But yeah. Um, it's interesting, because Telekinesis could be massively useful, but also having precision shots five up on your um, twin-linked laser rapiers could also be, <laughs> you like, oh, that Warlord is now gone. Like, could yeah. also be massively useful. So I can I can see the extra survivability, I think, is, is good. Um what I can see initially is people rolling up against this list and being like, this is not, this yeah. is going to be an easy game. Yeah. Should, yeah. should I just give me the win now? And then, <laughs> and then completely like, fuck. I, I agree. Yeah. I think this is, this is crazy. So pray to with Telepathy. Ricardo gets all his spreadsheets out. And starts <laughs> and like, I'm sorry, oh. sorry, this is telling me you are dead. Absolutely. Uh, and Stoic Defender, uh, two apothecaries with Artificer Armor and Raptora. Um, and I think the Raptora is the Hammer of Wrath. I want to say it's the Hammer of Wrath one. Uh, two Rapier Quad Launchers, three Laser Rapier uh, Rapiers. Yeah, all good choices, I think. Uh, 20 Despoilers with uh, Axes, um, Sergeant with Artificer and Power Fist. So the K and Axes are like plus two strength if the if the power goes off. So that's, yeah. that's not bad at all. Um Five recons, uh, as you'd expect. I'm not sure recon marines can take artificer armor. I think their sergeant is incapable of doing that, but worth, yeah, worth, worth a too. check. Yeah. Um, Twenty attack marines with vexilla. Okay, there's so much scoring in this, man. Okay. Oh no, there's just four scoring, four scoring. Um, yeah, I like that. And then ten marines with melt gun. Yeah, love that. And then 10 Marines with Plasma Gun. Yep, love that. And then three Proteus Land Speeders, double grav. Yep. Um, the Hunter Killers are interesting. I never usually take the Hunter Killers, but um, I can see how they well, could be useful. And then this is... The... Jabs, for sure. Definitely yeah. take one to Jabs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think they're... Really... Look at that. Uh, um, and they're then this good. this one is the, is, is the real left field. 10 Heavy Sport Marines with Heavy Flamers. And actually, if you give them Deep Strike, like, they're going to do some serious work scorpius and then two vindicator laser destroyers with searchlights yeah really nice like i think so initially i absolutely fucking love this yeah. this is cool. this is getting the, the loins going right now in terms yeah. of this but also really through how well this is the classic example of like really like top tier list design for me yeah i think so as well yeah i'm not sure I, because I think with the synergizing with the powers as well, with the mm. psychic powers and also the um uh with the with like the core powers that they come with, I think this is just going to be like off the chain. I think this is going to be really difficult to play against. I think. Yeah, I was about to say this is a real puzzle, but it's a puzzle for kind of both parties. Yeah, I think the only thing is that if your opponent has mass augury scanners, mass yeah. bulk height, um, and it, is able to counter. Yeah, counter yeah. it. But it has point. to be able to counter it, because otherwise I think that you there's just going to be so much on the board still left. And then you've got the Proteus there, just like, okay, well, that Dreadnought with Targeting Ray or Sakaar and Argus with the Helical that stays mm -hmm. still to get intercepts, it's, it's now gone, or it's snap firing or whatever. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah, lo love this. Um, really good inspiration. Not much more I can really say on that. No, we're going to go through. I do you know what I'd like to do? I think we're, go we're going to do a... Um... A Thousand Suns Legion Deep Dive. Uh, we're recording it this month with our friend Adam and Full Circle Hobby. And I think I would like to bring this list up. Oh, good idea. We discuss it with him just to see if he's got any any ideas. But I think this is <laughs> I'm sure he will. To me, this is this is this is 40 chest. This yeah, this is, yeah, it's, it looks pretty nuts, actually. Do you have a mouse to green? In which case <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Right, let's um last one. Look. Last one. Okay, so it's this is Andy's list. Because it's yeah, a this world eaters list. It's gonna be incredibly straightforward. Yeah. So it's three thousand point world eaters list uh with Berserker Assault. And um I played Andy the other day. Um uh, it was an absolutely brilliant game. I oh, uh, really enjoyed it. Yeah, he brought the um Mastodon. Um and it came down to a dice roll in the end. What has he said about this list out of curiosity? He said nothing. There's no he context. He just said, this, "This is my list." Worries, no context. It's just cool. this is the this is the list. Oh yeah, this is another, so so. Chaplin, fine, bare bones. Praetor with chainsaw and meteor hammer, and then fifteen rampages, ten with meteor hammers, and the rest between fights. Now he used the meteor hammers against me. They were Ooh. devastating. I did not like. I was expecting mass phalanx blades, but actually the meteor hammers 
fucking kicked my dick in. Um, they were they were absolutely nuts. Um, and then he's got fifteen assault marines, and this is times by five with three power axes. The rest, including the sergeant, with chain axes, two hundred and twenty points. And he's got that five times. There's so many wounds on the board already. Um, he's gone for the rule of fifteen here. Uh, one parade with last cannon sponsors and magnum melter turrets uh, with searchlights, and then he's got that again, and then he's got a, a paired predator, really nice. Um, and then oh my god, this oh my god, there's so much AP two and AP one in this list. This is yep. crazy. Uh, and then finally, a Lam Raider Spartan with flare shield. The, like it, it is amazing how much he's packed into this list. Actually, like so delightfully straightforward, isn't it? Two, three, four, five, six. So he's got six um, predators in total. So just on the predators, he's got twelve uh, last cannon shots. And then three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen twin length Magna Melter shots, and they're thirty six inch range, obviously with uh, Armor Bane. And then um, he's off. He's then got another four twin link glass cannons with the Land Raider. Like this, this is going to be good. Yeah, this is good. And because I'm the honest. predators are in separate slots, you're like, oh, I have to deal with each predator at, at a time. Yeah. And it's one of them's going to stay alive, just really annoyingly, like these things always do. Yeah, I can't can't imagine playing this list. I think I'd crap myself. I yeah, this is this is so good, so good. I think if you've got right, last class, you I'm going to trouble. I was about to say, yeah, I've got, I've just written a a new Iron Fire list that I think would do quite well against this. Yeah. But my Death Guard would struggle. Yeah. Hugely. Because because the Assault Marines, like, they don't need to deal with your elites. The Predators deal with the elites. They just double out yeah. whatever it is. And the Rampages just, uh, like, can go in. They're almost, like, in reserve, you know, um, Napoleon's old, old guard. Like just come in as necessary, like and go where where the and put some heat on. Um, I love also the theme of the the meteor hammers as well. I think that's brilliant. And like proper, um, the head of the triari had like a meteor hammer. Delvaris had a meteor hammer, so I think that's, that's yeah, pretty cool. Um, right. So, um, if you want to email us. Then send an email to heresyhammer30k at gmail.com and don't forget to use hashtag heresyhammer on Instagram as well. It's always great seeing you guys list. And just a final thank you to our sponsors. Uh, so Sacris Mundus, uh, who do some absolutely awesome terrain. Uh, you can buy the files and then print them off. Uh, some really inventive and creative stuff from them. So make sure you go check those guys out. Uh, and we've also got BattleBling as well, working alongside BattleBling this month um, to do some nameplates for our attendees for the Solar War. Uh, and if you use Heresy Hammer, you get an extra 10% off as well at checkout. Yeah. Uh, and also don't forget to use Beowulf Miniature Printing for all those bits, you know, arms, axes, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure you check these guys out because they are absolute heroes. And with that one, we'd like to say thank you to our own Rampagers, our own Meteor yeah. Hammer clad Rampagers. Uh, so we've got 160 top tier Praetors at the moment. That's not that's just a fraction of our um, Patreons, um, but these are our top tier. And we had to go over a second page. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you. You are our Triari company. Thank you, guys. Uh, you are true friends of the show. And yeah, finally, fun. don't forget to use hashtag Heresy Hammer. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment as well. Please submit those uh, lists and any correspondence you have to heresyhammer 30 gmail.com. And if you enjoy this show and you would like more content from us, then please make sure you check out Heresy Hammer at, over at Patreon. But with that, I will bid you adieu and goodbye from me and a goodbye well, from today. John. I'll see you in the next one. Take Bye. care, guys. See you soon.